These are the laws and treaties that are involved in the conservation of biodiversity. And in this one, we are going to have an overview of the international laws and treaties, and then the overview of Kenya's policies and legislation in biodiversity conservation. So the relevant international treaties and conventions on conservation in the 1970s uh, and 1990s, a variety of treaties and conventions were developed to promote both the national and international action on ecosystems and biodiversity management. Among these were the famous Convention on Biodiversity, CBD, uh, UN Convention on the Law of the Sea, UN Conference on Desertification, the UNESCO UNEP Intergovernmental Conference on Environmental Education, the Convention on International Trade in Endangered Species, Sites of Wild Fauna and Flora, the Convention on the Conservation of Migratory Species of Wild Animals, Convention on Migratory Species, the Convention on Wetlands of International Importance, especially as waterfall habitat, the Ramsar Convention, then the Convention Concerning the Protection of Wild Cultural and Natural Heritage, Wild Heritage Convention, the International Treaty on Plant Genetic Resources for Food and Agriculture, and the International Plant Protection Convention. So these are the major treaties that we have and conventions that are there to guard ecosystems and also management of biodiversity. So in Kenya, the overview of the current legislation policies and institutional framework. So the Kenyan government current policies, legislation and institution framework largely reflects the evolution of conservation awareness and also the responses since the creation of the modern uh, states. So the policies that we have, that is the course of action or principles that guide action on biodiversity conservation has been formulated since the inception of the first uh, national uh, biodiversity strategic action plan. And they include the national land policy, use policy 2018, wildlife policy 2012, Forest Policy 205, National Tourism Policy 206, Environmental Policy 2013, Wetlands Conservation and Management Policy 2015, Climate Change Policy 2016, Aquaculture Policy 206, Biotechnology Policy 206, Agricultural Policy 2015, Livestock Policy 2008, Water Policy 2012, Food and Nutrition Policy 2011, Integration Coastal Zone Management Policy 2013, Science Technology Innovation Policy 2013, the National Policy on Traditional Knowledge, Genetic Resources and Traditional Cultural Expressions 209. So most of these policies, you may find them as downloadable documents. So you just uh, copy and paste, for example, the National Policy on Traditional Knowledge, Genetic Resources and Traditional Cultural Expressions 2009. You can click it on the website and you're likely to find a draft version of the same uh, available online to see more details. But you can see that we have policies touching across all the various types of biodiversity, wetlands, climate, aquaculture, agriculture, livestock, water, food and nutrition, coastal management, etc. Now the laws or the legislations that are there to effectively implement the conservation, sustainable use and development of biodiversity, Kenya has developed the following legislations or laws. The first one is the National Constitution of Kenya COK 2010, Article 69 of the Kenyan Constitution 2010 covers biodiversity issues comprehensively. 
Other legislative instruments will include uh, the Environmental Management Coordination Act, MCA 1999, the National Land Commission Act 2012, the Wildlife Management and Conservation Act 2013, the Land Legislation uh, Act 2012, Seed and Plant Variety Act 2012, then we have the National Museums and Heritage Act 206, Noxious Weeds Act 2012, Land Act 2012, Forest Act 2005, Bio Safety Act 2009, Kenya Agricultural and Livestock Research Act. We have mentioned this in one of our previous lessons. Water Act 202, Climate Change Act 2016, Fisheries Management and Development Act 2016, Agriculture Act 2012, Physical Planning Act 2012. So for legislations, these are laws in which if there is any violation of either of the biodiversity plans and uh, action plans and strategies, then they can be referred to, to guide us on how people should do. So for example, if you find people are cutting down trees within our forest, then the Forest Act is likely to play a part. In terms of biosafety, the issues of genetically modified organisms, this act is referred to, to check on what are the regulations of GMO, ETC. So in Kenya, we have had some strategies in the country that have been developed and are being implemented. And this will include the National Biodiversity Strategy and Action Plan 2000, that we looked at and then we have currently the government is focusing on four point agenda strategy for the next five years that we are, has been dubbed the four the big four agenda i'm sure we are all aware of this here in kenya and this will involve critical focus in the improvement of access to affordable housing food security which is important in conservation and nutrition universal health care and also manufacturing all the four focal points will significantly contribute to proper management of biodiversity and ecosystem services and goods. Then we, of course, we have the Vision 2030 strategic blueprint for Kenya. The framers of the Vision 2020 strategy did recognize that the growth of Kenya's economy rested heavily on the productivity of its natural resources and, of course, charted a path towards how we can sustain the natural resources. We have what we call the Lapset project, the Lapset corridor program in the Eastern Africans. It is the Eastern Africans largest and most ambitious infrastructure project bringing together Kenya, Ethiopia and South Sudan. This project will significantly increase the capability of arid and semi-arid counties in Kenya to formulate an executive sustainable biodiversity management programs then we also have a northern corridor transit and transport initiative so the nctti involve implementation of member state agreements that is monitoring performance and uh, to transforming the northern trade route into an economic development corridor and making the corridor a seamless efficient smart and green corridor this is conservation this initiative will improve movement of goods and services and hence ease the pressure on various natural resources so that at the end of the day we are con conserving our natural environment. In 2015, the Ministry of Environment, Natural Resources and Regional Development Authorities, Kenya, published a report titled Kenya's Natural Capital, a Biodiversity Atlas. This report is intended to inform and reinvigorate stakeholders to act on knowledge, institution, policy, technological and economic development challenges highlighted in the Atlas. We talked about mapping of biodiversity, so this was a good way of mapping what is our natural capital, so that every other ministry, both public and private, are informed so that they are able to solve any conservation challenges. Then Kenya has, of course, been reviewing biodiversity status and producing regular reports to the Convention on Biodiversity on Status and Trends 
on biodiversity and ecosystems within the country so that they can keep following up what is the status of extinction, for example. Then we have National Climate Change Response Strategy 2010 has been uh, prepared and is being implemented through the NCCAP. The Kenya National Climate Change Action, climate change today is very critical. It's one of the emerging issues in conservation and has been implemented and a new NCCAP for the period of 2018 to 2022 is being prepared because this is a current issue or concern. Then we have agricultural sector development strategy 2010 to 2020. We have a biotechnology policy 206 and a review to address uh, other issues including IES. National invasive alien species also management strategy. We have a strategic plan on management on invasive in protected areas. Then the Kenya Coastal Development Program for Sustainable Management of Kenya Coastal and Marine Resources was established. Integrated Coastal Zone Management is in place and is being implemented. Then NEMA in 2011 drew up Integrated National Land Use Guidelines. And in 2013, Ministry of Water, Environment and National Natural Resources Drafted Policy Guidelines for Collaborative Natural Resource Management 2013. And also to accelerate the implementation of various government strategies like we have seen towards biodiversity conservation, the government has instructed all its semi-autonomous government agencies to review their mandates and align them with sustainable natural resource management and where practical take advantage of the various legal frameworks and instruments at their disposal as we have seen the various legislative laws to effectively and efficiently promote sustainable development so we can see that a lot is already being done uh, currently and even in the past so we have already gone various strides in sustainable uh, biodiversity now, again, even as we have seen that, we have actually come across various institutions that have been involved, like Ministry of Water, Ministry of Environment. So we have what we call an institutional arrangement where various uh, uh, agencies across the government and even private come together so that they're able to work as a team. And over the years, they're able to deal with the various strategies. So we're able to combine different kinds of institutions so we do have several ministries that are involved within uh, the process of biodiversity related issues and here we have listed them some of the national institutions where issues of kenya's biodiversity can be found and also what their role uh, is is also defined within the same so one of the main is the national environment management management authority what we call NEMA. Then we have what we call Kenya Forestry Research Institute, KEFRI, Kenya Agricultural Livestock Research Organization, CALRO. We have looked at this at some point. Kenya National Bureau of Standards, Kenya Sugar Research Foundation, Lake Victoria Environment Management Project, Coast Development Authority, Lake Basin Development Authority. Uh, we have Ewasonyiro Development Authorities, Tana River Development Authority, Kerio Valley Development Authority, national universities also have teaching and research activities at the schools of environment and natural resource management like University of Nairobi, Kenyatta University, Moi University, Kenya, Jomo Kenyatta University and Igaton. Of course, we have national museums of Kenya. All of them will have uh, a lot of biodiversity concerns and roles. Kenya Forest Service and of course the Kenya Wildlife Service. So of course there is, a, I had mentioned Iri at some point, so in Kenya there is also several CGIR. CGIR is the consultative group on international agricultural research. So we have those centers in Kenya like Isipe, Iri, Ikrisat and Iri as well as national and international NGOs who are also working on biodiversity conservation. So suffice to state here 
that great efforts are being made in different sectors and by various national and international bodies whose efforts need to be well coordinated to make the country meet the targets of CBD. We have what we call regional initiatives. So Kenya is committed to regional initiatives. The government of Kenya has been committed to various regional agreements and initiatives towards biodiversity management. Some of them is East African Protocol on Environment and Natural Resource of the East African Community. Then Biodiversity Management Program by Intergovernmental Authority on Development, IGAD. And then we have already given an overview of the international agencies, treaties and agreements. So Kenya is of course uh, committed to them and Kenya ratified the Convention on Biological Diversity CBD and has adopted the Aichi uh, goals and targets in its efforts to fulfill the obligations to the CBD. And Kenya developed its first National Biodiversity Strategic Action Plan 2000, which has guided biodiversity conservation to date. And in addition, Kenya has also adopted uh, the related what we call the Nagoya Protocol on Biosafety and also Nagoya Protocol on Access and Benefit Sharing into Biodiversity Strategy to ensure regular reporting on the progress of implementation. So Nagoya helps us in terms of intellectual properties of what we already have in our nation. To enhance the taxonomic initiatives in Kenya, of course, the country has also developed the CBD Global Taxonomy Initiative so that when we have new uh, discovered organisms, we are able to correctly uh, map them within our nation. Uh, of course, this we have mentioned that in addition to CBD, we are also signatory to other conventions and agreements like the sites, uh, we have also the Convention of Migratory Species, we have the Ramsar Convention, the World Heritage Convention, we have the PGR for Food and Agriculture, and of course we have the International Plant Protection Convention. So Kenya has also ratified, adopted, and is implementing other environment-related instruments which argument biodiversity con conservation and these include implementation of nationally appropriate mitigation actions, NAMAs, and national adaptation programs of actions, NAPAs, under the UNFCC. And of course, the NCCAP to 2018-2022. So as far as Kenya is concerned, you can see we have a lot of mapping, we have a lot of uh, policies that guide, we have legislation and laws, and we also have the strategies. And of course, we have uh, regional commitment as well as international commitment.